Hi, I'm Stefan. Welcome to the Two Stack Developer Channel. In today's episode, we'll be looking at how to configure a locally running Bitcoin node for development purposes. Now, a locally running node that we set up for doing software development is different from a node that we'll be running in order to connect to the larger network. And as such, the special mode of running our Bitcoin node in is called regression test mode, also reg test. The reason why we would want to do this is because our node will not actually be connecting to the public network for either the mainnet or the public testnet. We'll only be running the node locally. We will not be accepting any inbound connections from other nodes and we will not be making outbound connections to other nodes. This is important because it means that none of the transactions, even for the testnet ones that we build locally, will be broadcast publicly, but it also means that we will not actually receive any of the public testnet um, data locally on our own node. This allows us to maintain a rather clean environment within which we can actually test and figure out, uh, especially for debugging purposes, what if anything went wrong with our software uh, as we're trying to submit uh, transactions or retrieve transactions from the locally running node. We can also quite easily mine coins. So the current version of Bitcoin at the time that I'm recording this is um, 1.0.8. Now I say Bitcoin, I mean, of course, Bitcoin SV. Okay, um, we're about to download the software. So why don't we get started with that? Um, let's go over to our to our browser. Um, the website we want to actually visit is bitcoinsv.io. This is the main website for the Bitcoin SV node project. Um, we'll head over to the miners node software menu. Um, there's the download button there. When we hit the download button, we'll see an archive of all of the old versions of Bitcoin. Um, 1.0.8 is the current newest version of Bitcoin. There are essentially three versions in this. Um, in, in all these folders, you'll notice three versions of the software. There is a binary debug build with all the debug symbols in it. There is the regular binary build. And then there's the sources. Um, I just installed the binary because it's actually compatible with my version of Linux that I'm running. Um, if you're running Mac OS X or, um, or another version of um, Unix, or maybe you want to build under Windows, you might need to download the sources and build from scratch. Um, in my case, my binaries work, so I didn't have to do anything, any of that. Okay, now that we've actually uncompressed our um, archive into our um, bin folder, so I've got mine in um, my home folder, uh, bin, and then Bitcoin is v 1.08. Notice that I've created a data folder here. This data folder won't exist. So I can actually remove this because once you, once you unzip your archive for the binary, the data folder will be missing. Um, that data folder needs to be created. And then inside the data folder, we need to create a configuration file called bitcoin.conf. The settings that need to go into bitcoin.conf, we can go over to our browser quickly. If you go and look at the developer guide, the two stack developer guide, I've actually got good instructions in the getting started guide on running a test node. There is a, um, the entire section here for our Bitcoin configuration. And I just noticed that I've actually got um, a typo here. It's not bitcoind.conf, it's bitcoin.conf. That's the name of the configuration file. It's not bitcoind.conf, it's bitcoin.conf. Okay, I'm going to have to, to fix that. Um, people who come here might actually get the wrong. Your configuration won't work if, you, if the file is called bitcoind.conf. All right, so we're just going to copy that entire thing over. Um, let me bring you along. All right, we're back in our terminal. Um, if you recall, in my terminal just now, I opened up. Um, actually, I need to open up data bitcoin.conf and then paste in here my entire configuration. Close that, and now I can start up um, Bitcoin um, daemon. And the way to start that up is we basically have to run Bitcoin D, pass it the data parameter, and reference um, 
the data folder where we actually have bitcoin.conf um, uh, deployed. It tells us that Bitcoin um, server is starting. So let's look at our process list. There it is, 12.49 PID. Um, let's quickly check if all of the network ports are active. Yes, there we go. Bitcoin D is listening on 18.332, 28.332. Ah, that's Java listening on that one. Okay, so Bitcoin D is listening on all the ports that we wanted to listen on. Clear the terminal. Um, Bitcoin Daemon is running now. Um, so the next thing we can do is actually move on to interacting with the daemon by uh, playing around with the command line utilities a little bit. Yeah. Okay, next step. Uh, let's start doing some simulated uh, block mining. All right. I'm just going to copy this into my terminal. And of course, I'm going to have to bring you along to my terminal. Otherwise, you won't see what I'm doing. Right. Um, essentially, what I'm saying is I'm running Bitcoin CLI with the data that are configured, and I'm going to ask it to generate 101 Bitcoins. Um, actually, before I do that, um, before I do that, um, I want to quickly maybe run another command, which is to interrogate my wallet just to confirm that my wallet doesn't actually have a balance, right? So if I go get balance here, there will be no balance in my, in my current local wallet inside the node software. But if I do then go ahead and I run this command, um, it'll basically give me a whole bunch of um, transaction IDs associated with the Coinbase outputs um, that is generated. Um, and the reason why we want to generate 101 um, transactions um, or rather 101 blocks um, is essentially what we just did instantaneously is because we are now pretending to be a miner and a miner can't spend the first every coinbase transaction that the miner or the miner reward right from a coinbase transaction can't be spent by the miner until at least a hundred subsequent blocks have been mined so in order for us to be able to spend our first Coinbase transaction, we need to mine in a subsequent 100 blocks on top of that. This is just for convenience purposes because um, once, and this is for us to be able to actually uh, start doing things with the coins that we mine. If you just mine one or two blocks, then you won't be able to spend those. Also remember that the software in the reg test mode does not automatically mine or automatically generate blocks. You have to explicitly come in here to generate those blocks. Um, and that is essentially what we have now done. We've explicitly generated 101 blocks, and the very first block is spendable, but 100 of them are not yet. We have to bury at least that 100 under another 100, so we'll always perpetually be 100 blocks behind, uh, behind with the coins that we can actually spend. But we should have enough coins in the first output. Um, so let's look at, let's interrogate our, our wallet balance now, and we can see there are now 50 spendable coins in our wallet, right? That's from um, uh, the, the initial block reward that we got. That's where Bitcoin started as well with Genesis, right? 50 uh, Bitcoin block reward. Okay, so now that we've seen our wallet balance, um, we can create a new address. And I'm going to switch over quickly to the browser again. Um, so in the browser, we can see next thing to do, we want to get a new address. Let's do that now. Go back to the terminal. And there we have it. We've got this new address. Yeah. Um, what are we going to do with this address? Well, this is a receiving address. And we can essentially send money from ourselves to ourselves at this point in time. So I'm going to um, export that address to and call it the recipient address, right? OK, 
Okay, create an environment variable for the recipient address. Ah, uh, you didn't see me do that, did you? Okay, and you can look at the terminal. You can see I just created an environment variable there. Um, let me go back to the browser. And next thing I'm going to do um, is send money or 10 bitcoins to this recipient address. Now, if I can actually get my fat thumbs to work properly. Let me get back to the terminal. Then I'm going to send myself to send some coins to the recipient address. Right now, I've sent ten coins. Um, let me query my balance, my wallet balance again. Now I've got. Um, 49.99 coins. I think I might have said one. I've got insufficient coins and I've sent 10. Oh, of course. <laughs> I've sent the coins back to myself so the wallet is basically showing me that my balance has changed but the reason my balance is 49 point something at this um, and not 40 is because of course the um, there's the minor fee and i get paid a small fee to the network in order for um, the transaction to go through right so i've sent the money back to myself but the point i guess that i'm trying to make here with this is these simple few techniques that i've just showed you will actually now allow me to build the software that will create transactions, generate or create private keys that generate the transactions or rather the addresses from the private keys. And then these addresses we can then use to send and receive testnet bitcoins locally on the local network. We will generate the raw transactions and we'll push those raw transactions into our uh, test node. And um, yeah, so that is it for this episode. Thank you so much for um, for watching. I will the next episode should be up uh, not too long after this one, and in that one we will be looking at how to actually get our development environment set up. Um, I haven't decided which one I'm going to do first. We have both um, a Dart as well as a Java developer stack, but um, yeah. Thanks for watching. Catch you around next time.